Okay guys, welcome back. This is the Q&A video for 50 subs that I told you about in the last video. Uh, so, with that being said, let's get into it with the first question. The first question comes from Gamer Girl and asks, I have a question, how did you meet your crewmates, Tombstone and Scales? Personally, I think this is a very good question, and uh, I'll talk about it now. So, Scales I actually know in real life, well I know both of them in real life, but I met Scales first in high school, and I only met Tombstone in college. Uh, I knew Scales for a few years before college, and that during high school, obviously. And uh, then, when I started college, I built a PC. Well, sort of, a few months in. And once I'd built that PC, and Luke, uh, Scales found out, he uh, suggested that I buy Sea of Thieves. And that's pretty much how I met him. As for Tombstone, it was a case of we were in the same class, uh, he was working on a website based around Sea of Thieves. Um, once I'd bought Sea of Thieves and got into it a bit more, uh, I talked to him in lesson and said, uh, would you mind hopping on with me at some point? And that's about it. The next question comes from the man himself, Tombstone, and he asks, Blood of the Dead is the best map, right? And then in brackets, what is your favourite zombies map? I never played BO4 Zombies, purely based on how it was poorly received, shall we say. And as such, I don't really have an opinion to give on Blood of the Dead, however from what I've heard, it was writ fairly bad, especially given the map it was based on. Like, as a remake, I heard it was pretty underwhelming, so I'm just gonna go with the community consensus and say it wasn't great. As for choosing a favourite map in general, my options are fairly limited as I never played BO1 or BO2 either, and that was due to just never actually buying the games. Um, but I did play World at War and then Zombies Chronicles in BO3, and as such, I have those maps to choose from based on that. Well, I also played all of BO3, so, but based on playing BO3 and World at War, I'm going to say that my favourite map is between either Shinonuma or Dreisendrak. And the reason for Shinonuma is I just like how every game is going to be different because whilst yeah, every game on Shinonuma you're going to start, the, start up and then open up um, one door and go outside, you never know which place you need to go to first. I also like how it I also like it for the it being the first map to introduce a box, and it's right underneath spawn. So, on Shinonuma, you, there's no worry about where's box on this map, you'd know that it's straight downstairs, there you're at the box. Additionally, I kind of like the um, introduction of the Primus crew. Not Primus, Ultimate. God, yeah. The Ultimate crew in the World at War version, as... It was Shinonuma that introduced you, um, and that's about it really, yeah. Now my reasoning for Derizendrak is because I really like the theme of the map. Like, it's an old medieval castle, like Blundell says, um, he's a sucker for medieval castles. I'm not as much as Blundell is, but I really like the map itself, the layout of it, and how easy it is to get into. It doesn't take a while to set up. You, I think I just like the ease that the map offers because, yeah, sure, you can go do an easter egg, which is a fairly good easter egg as well, one of the best boss fights, but at the same time, you don't have to. Within, by round eight, you're set up and you've got a high round setup working. You don't have to worry about that anymore, unlike some other maps I'm looking at you, Zetsubo. Next up, Dragon Extreme asks why I like Sea of Thieves so much. Um, I'm going to start by making a comparison to Destiny. Whilst they are two wildly different games, I think you can still draw a fairly good comparison. I mean, starting with the uh, whole you go out, do a quest, come back with loot, and that's your gameplay cycle, that's a very good gameplay loop to me. I because I feel like every session is rewarding in some way. 
on top of this, I feel like, again, in both Destiny and Sea of Thieves, the combat is so satisfying. Like, Destiny has really good gunplay, it feels good to build your monster killing machine, as Luke Smith calls it, and just go out and slay monsters. In Sea of Thieves, it feels good to equip that Eye of Reach and that Cutlass and just go out and mow down a horde of skeletons on an island somewhere. I think that's a really big factor in it, the fact that the game feels good to play. Another reason for me liking the game so much is I just really enjoy multiplayer games. I feel like they make for good stories, and a game that makes for a good story offers opportunity to share those stories with other people and talk about them outside of the game. And I feel like if you can connect with someone over a game, it helps build friendships. I mean, a lot of my friends on most social platforms have come from building, a, have, from team building and playing these online games. And I think that's really important for a game to succeed is the ability to talk with other people about it. Furthermore, I think it's got a really, really enjoyable art style. I mean, some of the most breathtaking screenshots I have taken in any game have come from that have come from Sea of Thieves. Sure, I've got a couple from Destiny and some Skyrim sh shots, but I don't think I've ever seen a game that can create just such beautiful atmosphere as Sea of Thieves. Then when you pair all that together in one big combination, you just get a very, very good game. And that's why I like it so much. I don't think there's much more I can say on that. Finally, Julius Bad Boy asks, what would I like to do with the channel in the future? Now, initially, I'm going to try and continue making more edited content, like the Modern Warfare series that I've just done with Tombstone. In fact, we have another thing planned alongside the Minecraft series that I mentioned a while back in the channel update. And I think that that could be a very good dynamic to try and sustain that and only have the only have this channel be for edited content and similar to that I'm contemplating making a second channel for me to export VODs to. Now what that would mean is that A your inbox wouldn't be spammed by notifications of me exporting streams, which is a bonus, and B, it would mean that I can focus this channel on edited content, however, unfortunately I would still be doing the mon the weekly stream on a Monday on, this main on the main channel, and as such they would still be here purely because I can't stream on one and export to the other with YouTube. That's the only difference. And finally, I want to make more videos like this where I interact with you guys because I feel like it's important for me as a content creator or as the media likes to call it an influencer but mainly just a guy making videos as a hobby I feel like it's good for me to make a connection with the audience try and interact with you more rather than just hearting your comment every once in a while I feel like it's more important for me to actually respond to you and get your opinions so that's basically my views, my plans for this channel at the current time. Obviously, they may change with time, but that's how I'm feeling at the minute. Okay, now before I sign off, I want to just quickly draw, draw attention to the discussion tab on my channel again, because it basically acts as a little bit of a subreddit. You can just sort of post questions there and I might be able to answer them. It's a good way of interacting with me between Q&As or whatever I end up calling these in the future and I'll and also the Twitter account that I've made so that you can stay up to date with videos and stuff. I know it's a bit of a scummy thing to do to just keep pushing it but I want to have that interaction with you guys and with that being said uh, y you know what I'm gonna say so just 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 go do it. Bye.